Mm. Well, uh, thankfully, it would seem that we are out of the woods in, in that respect. INEC nowadays d doesn't interfere in, in you know, they never used to. But we also see that parties themselves try to uh, comply with the rules that they themselves have given to INEC. But let us look at what has happened in Rivers, where, you know, a court order was not obeyed, and as a result, the primaries, uh, the results of the primaries produced by the APC have been nullified by the courts. What do you think is going to happen in in the reverse election, do you no, think you, uh, uh, Please, can you uh, uh, come again? Because you say the, 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 the judgment of the court was not obeyed? The, the order restraining, I think, was it the APC from fielding, from uh, conducting, there was controversy. Yes. The APC was divided in reverse state. Yes. And as such, you know, it was seen that two different primaries exactly. were conducted. And it was seen that some of the primaries were conducted in contravention of a court order. And as a result, it was seen that the appeal. The, the courts are not happy with that and, you know, have said that, you know, the INEC should not recognize any of the primaries that have been conducted by APC in River State. How do you think events are going to proceed uh, for the APC in that, for the forthcoming elections? Do you think they'll be able to field candidates at the end of the day? You see, the, the beauty of the Nigerian type democracy is uh, 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 um, uh, um, multipartisan. Let me put it that way. And that is why, as of today, we probably have over 90 registered political parties. In any case, it is not compulsory for a registered political party to feed candidates for every election, from the presidential election to, state, to national assembly election and to state houses of assembly. They could present for one or two. And that is why at the end of the election, INEC reviews the activities of the political parties and is vested with the power to delist or to deregister a political party that has not lived up to expectation. So, so long as other parties have fitted candidates for those particular elections in River State, and they will go ahead and conduct an election. They will conduct an election, but the APC doesn't look like it's going to have a candidate. No, for, for now, yes. for now, as we speak, as of today, mm -hmm. APC candidates are not on the list that have been released by INEC or persons that are qualified to contest election in River State. And that is the position until the court says otherwise. Mm. Uh, how do you think matters are going to proceed if the court still decide that candidates should not be fielded as a result of the division within the APC? Now, now dates for election have been fixed. Mm -hmm. Dates for elections have been fixed. INEC will proceed and conduct elections in River State. I never could proceed and conduct election in reverse. It means that the APC would not, might not be on the ballot? They are not likely to be on the For now, they won't be on the ballot. Mm. For now, they won't be on the ballot. For now, they won't be on the ballot. What precedence do you think this has? I mean, or what, what implications do you think this will have for elections in River State? First and foremost, let me make me to say that the unfolding scenario uh, in River State and in Zamfara State potent good omen for democracy in Nigeria. Because do not forget that an electoral body is an official umpire, an official bystander that is neutral, that is not supposed to take the side. And what we have had or seen or experienced in the past in Nigeria is where the political power in government at the central level tends to manipulate or dictate the tune to the electoral body, which ought not to be so. That happened very previously. And it's not necessary for us to mention uh, the, the specific governance, uh, 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 government at, at, at that time. So if INEC could, in exercise of the power conferred on it by the Constitution and the Electoral Act, refuse to allow, in quote, the candidate of APC, that is the ruling party at the federal level, to my mind, it is a good credentials and a good testimony of finding that they are truly independent and that there's a very high likelihood that we are going to have a free and fair election. What? If INEC can use the legal sledgehammer mm -hmm. on APC. What message do you think it was sent to the political parties? I think the message, the message that it, 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 it is sending, or it has already sent, mm -hmm. is that parties must operate within the ambits of the law that you cannot, you cannot give and take at the same time. It is you, the party, that have developed, produced, and issued your party guideline. And it is you, as part of the requirement for registration, is to abide by the extant law. Mm. That is the Electoral Act and the Constitution 
of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and that it is no longer going to be business as usual. Mm -hmm. It means political parties must do the right thing. Mm. Because as it is now, it does not mind who else is God. If you do the wrong thing, we'll sanction you. Mm. And you, I think that is the message. Do you think INEC takes the credit in a reverse instance? Because some people will say that it is the court that has said that INEC should not field any candidates for the APC. Uh, do you, how is INEC taking the credit? <clears throat> do not forget that we are in a country, and, I don't, and I'm not one of those that believe that Nigeria is a lawless country. Because a country of over 180 millions, and then the few bad eggs uh, tend to give us the bad name, and it is more pronounced than what you and I are doing and contributing to the good image, image of the country. So we have a country that judgment and orders of courts are not obeyed, and it portends anarchy and danger when judgment and orders of courts are not obeyed. All orders of courts and judgment, no matter how unreasonable it may appear, for the moment, ought to, ought, ought to be obeyed. So even if the disqualifications of candidates or aspirants or candidates from River State is premised on a court order, I think INEC should be given the credit for obeying the court order. Mm. Uh, you know, let's quickly look at Ogun State. Ogun State's PDP this time around looks a little different. They ha are saying that, I mean, INEC has published the name of uh, Buruji Kashamu as the yes. PDP candidate. And it would seem that the, the PDP in that state is not happy. They insist that they're going to field another candidate. In the face of judgment, uh, the Supreme Court judgment saying that the party is the one that is, you know, that owns the candidates, it's the party that wins elections. Do you think it is possible for a party to say, no, this is not the candidate we are going to uh, field, this is the candidate we are going to field? Is it possible? In the first instance, uh, let, let me confess that I have not been too uh, very current with the scenario in Ogun State. Mm -hmm. But the questions to be asked is that in the first instance, who submitted the name of um, this, the senator? Uh, remind me the name. Buruji Kashimo. Yeah, yeah Kashimo. Who submitted the name? Is it not the political? Is, is it not PDP? Mm. There has been controversy as well. You know, factions of the PDP now, with, is, is in Ogun State. INEC have the list of registered political parties, and political parties must, at all time, from time to time, conduct their primaries or they have congresses, either an elective congress non-elective congress, and it depends on the business of the day. One of the business could be the election of party officials, which starts from the world level to the local government to the state level, and then the national convention. So, and in all this, INEC also monitors. Mm -hmm. So INEC have the list of the authentic party structure in every state. And I do not think that uh, INEC will go on overboard, you know, to accept the list from structures that are not reflective as to the true position or the true leadership of the party in that state. Authentic, how is that determined? I mean, when you look at the controversies that trailed the primaries of the APC in many states, for instance, uh, let's take Imo State, uh, where it would seem that there were two different uh, factions again. You know, some people claim that a primary was conducted somewhere. Some other people claim primaries were conducted in another place. How does INEC, you know, especially when you find uh, it seems some semblance of authority in, the, in those political parties, in the two different primaries that have been conducted, how does INEC determine which candidate to, 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 to take from, the, from, uh, from a political party? L like I said, mm -hmm. who is empowered to prepare and organize or conduct party primaries in the state? Who is? No, I'm, 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 it's a rhetorical question yes, that I'm going to I'm, answer. I'm, I'm posing it yes, to you now. That, 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 I'm, uh, that I'm going to answer. Mm -hmm. Based on the party guideline for the conduct of primary, mm -hmm. the usual practice, and I've had political experience before I retire from politics, under the guideline, the national secretariat, usually the national working committee of the party, will compile list of persons that are said to be the electoral panels and send them to the state to conduct the primary. And part of their checklist is a table or a list of the, of the leadership of the party in that state. And then you find out that when you, when, when you go back to the state or when the chicken come home to roast, either because of divergent political interest, which often time is, is, is elevated above the supremacy of the party, somebody has sets up his structure, often time maybe the governor, mm -hmm. because of the overwhelming powers, both financial 
and constitutional powers that he has, mm -hmm. in order to elect his own candidate, may unilaterally, illegally, say that maybe the, 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 the chairman of the party probably have been suspended or, and put in place his own party structure. Now the, 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 the real party structure on their own will not accept that scenario. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that before then, list of delegates would have been compiled. If it's indirect primary, all party members who have cards can vote. If it's direct primary, usually it is delegate. Mm -hmm. you know? So if elections, I mean a party primaries are conducted by the two opposing factions of the party, mm -hmm. it has become very easy to determine who have the mandate constitutionally to mm -hmm. conduct this primary. And when you look at it and you determine who have the mandate to conduct this primary, I think common sense, uh, it behoves on common sense mm -hmm. that you should accept the list of the persons properly and thoroughly charged with our responsibility of conducting the primary. And that is exactly what happened in Imo State. Well, Professor, it would seem that we have to wrap up this conversation just when it was beginning to heat up. Mm -hmm. We have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. Uh, Professor Jerry Madaki is of the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. And he's been talking to us about the issues concerning the fielding of candidates of the APC, or the, is it the non-listing of candidates by INEC for the APC in Zamfara Rivers, and also the controversy in Ogun State. Uh, that's where we'll wrap it up for this particular segment. Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. Please stay with us.